evening. I'm Lori Champion, tonight's chairman, and along with my two co-chairmen, Scott Pelletier and Lynn Nicholas, and our entire committee, we want to welcome you to the 2020 Nantucket Artists Association Auction and Gala. Over the years, our venues have changed, and this year is no exception. But changing times and circumstances did not dampen our enthusiasm or stifle our creativity. Tonight, we are so excited to announce that thanks to NCTV18, art lovers from all over Nantucket will be able to join us. Also, our art fans and supporters from all over the country will be able to join our real-time bidding on YouTube from the comfort of their living room. By now, our gala patrons should be enjoying the lovely dinners that were delivered to their homes by Island Kitchen, along with some very special wine from Donlan Family Wines, who so generously donated all the wine this evening. We are so very grateful. In keeping with our longtime tradition, Raffaello Sona will be back to serve as our auctioneer. He has a bit of experience as he's been with us at this event for more than 25 years. Truly our old master. All of the art tonight has been especially created and donated by our artists in celebration of our 75th anniversary. Since 1945, the AAN has followed its mission to promote Nantucket artists, preserve and display Nantucket art, and teach classes and education to students and children and adults year round. We celebrate these artists tonight and all who have found their creative inspiration on Nantucket. They have so vastly enriched the cultural fabric of our island life. Please support them and help us continue our mission by bidding enthusiastically, generously, and often tonight. For those of you who might prefer a more leisurely pace, our traditional silent auction will also be held and be open for all to see on 32auctions.com through Sunday. This year, we are thrilled to honor Robert Frazier. Affectionately known as Bobby, he has been with us for more than 40 years in almost every position from artist to author to board president to artistic director. Bobby has just recently completed a special book about our 75 years, which our gala patrons will receive tonight. It is wonderful patrons like you who have allowed the AAN to flourish. And tonight we celebrate and honor Seward Johnson and his wife, Cecilia Joyce, whose guidance and generosity was so pivotal in our early success and for which the gallery on Washington Street is named. We will miss Seward. In looking forward, we're so fortunate to have the leadership of Courtney Bridges, our executive director. Her tireless energy is only matched by her amazing can-do spirit. How lucky we are to have her and her great staff. Now I hope you will tuck your cell phone up close as you watch a little bit of our pre-show unfold and get ready to bid for your favorite pieces for tonight is all about you and celebrating art. Thank you, our art lovers. I'm Nellie O'Gara, the current president of the Artist Association. I wanna welcome you and thank you for joining us in the first ever Artist Association Virtual Gala. It's times like these that we wanna remember what's eternal and what's true. For me, art is a language that is eternal and true. And tonight we're going to be celebrating that art is for everyone. In fact, we come to art with an appreciation that has a vast and infinite number of experiences. Tonight is an important night for the Artist Association, primarily because the proceeds from this evening go to help the Artist Association in support of its mission. And if I may, just reflect on that for a moment. The AAN is dedicated to supporting those who have a talent for the visual expression of their experiences. The Artist Association is dedicated to guiding those who seek to discover their own talent and for those who are looking to find talent in others. 
and finally to preserving the legacy of art on Nantucket. Thank you to Lori Champion, our chairperson, and her two co-chairs, Scott Peltier and Lynn Nicholas, whose dedication and whose commitment has guided us to this evening. Without you, we couldn't have done this. And Lori, I must say, your last name says it all. You are our champion. I'd also like to thank Channel 18. I'd like to thank the Island Kitchen. I'd like to thank Raphael for adapting so well to this particular way of doing our gala. I'd like to thank the staff of the Artist Association and our executive director. And most importantly, I'd like to recognize Bobby Frazier, our artistic director, who's been with us for a long time, who's guided us in many galas in the past, and who recently authored and published our history. Bobby, thank you for making that available to all of us for many years to come. Thank you to my table mates, and thanks to all of you for joining us tonight as we socially distance and we virtually experience the celebration of Nantucket art. Have a great evening. My name is Michael Guyart. I've been photographing well since I was in high school at Nantucket High. I'd say I've been doing it professionally as, a, as an artist for the past 13 years. I find this piece particularly important because of how it compels us to consider it in more than just aesthetic and physical terms, but also in the symbolic realm. A channel marker shows us the way, warns us of danger, and guides us to safety. Washed ashore and presented in this manner, it conjures thoughts of both our complicity and our agency, our fragility and our capacity to endure. You know, I, I like to think that I make art for reasons beyond just reproducing beauty. In this piece, I, I feel as though I really managed to do both, to make something beautiful and profound, and to do so within a vernacular that's consistent with the landscape of Nantucket. My name is Greg Hill. I've been painting since I was 12 years old, and we moved to Nantucket in 1979. And the first thing I did was to join the Art Association of Nantucket. This is a painting I'm giving to the Art Association for the gala. It's an oil painting I did on linen canvas, and it's called Coming and Going. It represents the cat boats of Nantucket. One's going into the harbor on a foggy day, and one's coming out. It represents a lot of Nantucket, the, the Gray Lady, that's what it's called. I've seen so many days when the fog comes in 
and it just uh, it, it sets a mood and this is a mood I like to uh, paint of Nantucket. I love Nantucket. There are so many things to paint. I could paint the harbor, I could paint the beach, I could paint the ocean, uh, I could paint out of my backyard. Uh, there's ponds, there's, there's, there's so many things to paint and the mood changes. We get here eight months out of the year in the spring, it was one different, summer is so different and the fall is different. My name is Brian Sager. I've been a photographer for eight to 10 years. What inspires me as a photographer is the natural world around me. So the piece that is in the auction was photographed a few summers ago uh, during Nantucket Race Week. Over the course of the day, the wind went from very minimal to very light to non-existent. I was trying to stay focused on racing, but eventually had to say, I give up. This race is clearly going to get called off at some point in time. And I've been waiting for years to see clouds like that isolated by themselves, not as part of a big thunderstorm. What's so special about it is just the moment and the fact that it was such a nice day and the conditions were just perfect and happened to be in the right place at the right time with the right camera equipment. Reimagine your insurance experience. Bridgepoint Risk Management and Pure Insurance are dedicated to making our members smarter, safer, and more resilient to pursue their passions with confidence. Call Jeff Elliott at Bridgepoint Risk Management to find out if Pure is right for you. The Artist Association has over 1,600 pieces in our collection, and today I'm going to show you a couple of them. This piece is by J.D. Hunting, and it was done in 1898. It's one of the earliest works in our collection. It shows you the traditional Nantucket scene of a rose-covered or hollyhock-covered cottage in Sconset. You can note the light pastel tones. Uh, this was a very traditional and popular form at that time. And uh, it is just a beautiful piece that shows you the old Nantucket. This little gem is an Ann Ramsdale Congdon that was recently donated to us. This was a 1931 uh, scene from the wharf showing actual working fishing boats. A lot of wharf scenes uh, tend to show commercial boats, coal boats, freight boats. This one is actually showing you the old fishing fleet when it was still going in full force. It's a little beauty. She's very popular as an artist today and uh, we're very, very grateful for getting this into our collection. Next, I'm gonna show you something a little more modern. This is a current member of the Artists Association, Yulia Mastikanova Fini. And this is a different perspective of Sconset, showing you a more modern take on how the art has evolved. The colors, the light, the use of shadows. It's a real beautiful piece. And finally, this is a work by Philip Hicken. This was donated recently by his daughter as part of an initiative we had to collect 75 new works for the permanent collection as part of our 75th anniversary. This is a impressionist representation of the harbor and was also used on our 75th anniversary book edited by Bobby Frazier. And this gives you the kind of definitive history of the Nantucket art colony. Also, I do want to add that our permanent collection has a circle of friends, which does help support it. Uh, it's a very important project to protect this and preserve this for the future. So I hope some of you will consider joining. I thank you very much for your participation this evening and hope you're enjoying it. Thank you. My name is Andrew Kotchin and I'm one of the board members of the Artists Association of Nantucket. My company, Workshop APD, is proud to support the Artists Association and this gala during these unique times in 2020. I want to thank everyone for all of their invaluable work in promoting and supporting the visual artists of Nantucket, many of whose work is even present in some of our projects. Enjoy the evening. Our process in order to get the Visual Arts Center ready to accept visitors and students and families to come and take classes 
We started by researching the state guidelines and the OSHA guidelines in order to organize our classrooms to prepare to accept visitors to the Art Center. We have continued to welcome them with open hearts and smiles, even through our masks. We've learned to smile with our eyes in order to help people feel comfortable. Art is healing and in these difficult times, it is very important that we have our doors open to our community. Students are really excited to come back to the Visual Arts Center to see familiar faces, to have a new experience. The programming today is pretty typical of what we do, a watercolor portraiture class with our artist in residence, Mario Robinson, as well as Adventures in Art, which is for our six to nine year olds, where they'll cover a plethora of different projects each day, uh, as well as clay sculpture and a multimedia sculpture class. Taking classes is important because you never really master anything. There's always something to push your brain on. Through art, we evolve, we become stronger, we evaluate things, we have this propensity to make meaning and put meaning in our lives. Hello, John Carruthers here, woodcut artist. Uh, what I do is I draw an image on a piece of wood, usually pine, and I carve it out with a special knife made by Paul McCarthy, famous on island woodcarver. Um, I print it and frame it thusly. Um, every year I do a special large woodcut, uh, usually about four feet by, by two feet, specifically for the gala. And I usually do it of an iconic summer scene. So I hope you enjoy this year's entry and good luck with the gala. I'm Elizabeth Congdon and I've been showing my art in Nantucket for about 30 years. When I paint, I'm inspired by natural beauty and a need to connect with people. Not because life is always beautiful, be but because I think we need beauty to offset the pain in the world. The painting in the auction is special because it's Gibbs Pond, which is a beautiful spiritual place for me and I think for other people too. There used to be baptisms there by the praying Indian, John Gibbs. And I love the idea of, of hovering, whether it's a dress, or a flower, or just our island between the sea and the sky. So I entitled it Heaven and Earth because I like that, um, that sense of having one foot in either place, a sense of doubt, a sense of a pause that, that we have time to think and explore. My name is John Devaney. I'm a painter. I've been painting pretty much all my adult life. I've exhibited in Boston, New York, and I moved to Nantucket uh, part-time in the summer in 1991. This painting is called Picnic of the Gods, and it probably comes from my fascination both with Greek mythology, and I love the Iliad, reading about the Iliad, and every time I'm at the beach, I can't help thinking about all those Greeks 
showing up just outside of Troy, pulling their ships up there. There's a whole identification with what it must have been like to be on a bright, sunny beach. And Nantucket has always kind of inspired that to me. I sort of daydream about it. In this particular painting, it's sort of a time out for the gods. And you can see in the, I guess would be your far right of the painting, there's old Zeus. He's coming by in a sort of uh, Florida, Miami t-shirt. Uh, there's Hera, the goddess, Odysseus, and they're having a feast out on the, uh, out on the beach. Okay, I think it's kind of a uh, exploration of different times brought together. I think that fascinates me, of taking one period and seeing if it will fit, seeing if it will resonate in another period. And the idea that you, even today, you could have a sense of what happened long, long ago, that has a fascination for me. Tonight, we want to take a moment to honor our dear friend, Seward Johnson. Cecilia and Seward were patrons of the Artists Association in their young years, and for over 50 years, they've supported our organization. When we faced the challenge to open our own downtown gallery, it was the Johnsons who spearheaded that initiative. Today, the Cecilia Joyce and Seward Johnson Gallery on 19 Washington Street continues to host more than 100 artists every year. The Johnsons are generous with their time, judging many of our juried shows, adding to their interesting art collection, and introducing friends to our gallery. Seward himself was spirited and fun-loving, actively working on his craft through the past summer, during which time he hired a young AAN member to assist him with a special tray painting project. We will certainly have a tribute to Seward in the gallery, and he is a person we plan to celebrate throughout our 75th anniversary year. Seward was more than a benefactor. He believed in the vitality of culture. He championed all the arts, including the film festival, screenwriters, and community arts. He will be greatly missed. We are honored that Cecilia joins us tonight for the annual art auction and gala virtually. After some plein air notes and photos taken from different locations, I tried a 12 by 16 study. I decided to go less dark though for the 30 by 40. I begin with a cool sunny day wash of cerulean blue, then draw and redraw the roof line in burnt umber. I fill the solid shapes and start placement of the windows. Next move, defining the direction and angle of the sunlight on the building faces. I backdrop the buildings with sky color, block out the foundation, get some thin white on, and then some roof reds. I shift focus to define the station grounds and driveway and lay in some sky. Thicker paint adds dimension and solidity. Finally, the shadows and areas of strong light develop. Time to rough in window details, the green trim boards. I use foundation green grays from a few years back which I prefer over the present hideous dark green of their repaint. Then the neighbors require some attention to detail. Back to the building, there's difficulty getting the steps right, so I simplify the railings. And I've been avoiding the entire left side of the canvas, so time for the difficult side. I flush out the tower, the sign, the pole, then the perspective of the road down to the beach. The trickiest passage in the painting now is almost finished. Time to lean in to give the details as much character as possible. The fine O and double O brushes come out, the bell, the sign take shape. The last details are people. A bather walking down the road, a lady coasty polishing the bell. I include another figure to the lower right, coiling water hoses next to a covered grill. 99.9% .9 done.